BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. It's just gone 7.30 here on BBC Radio Cornwall and the final production stages are being put in place on a short Cornish language film which was filmed last year. It's called Trangelic Rising and Guy Potter, who is behind the film, is with me now. Evening to you. Good evening. Evening. Uh, before we start talking, it's a very interesting way how you are now here in the studio because uh, a few weeks ago, Jack Murley <laughs> was uh, doing his Your Shout challenge on The Breakfast Show BBC Radio Cornwall and you called in didn't you and I, I can't remember what it was the connection he wanted to hear yeah, from someone sure so I think he was uh, a, a number of subjects but one of them was have you ever shared a car with someone famous and I told him about some filming that I'd done a few years ago now where I was involved with a scene um, that was in a car with Tom Cruise and Simon Pegg and I was being a sort of body double and stand in for Jeremy Renner and it was quite a strange afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and what happened is when you were talking to Jack, you happened to mention this film, didn't you? Um, and then obviously time ran out. And uh, Jack thought sure. it would be great if I could talk to you about it. So isn't it funny how life has these things happen? So here you are now in the studio. Yeah. Welcome. It wasn't really to- planned. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you've, you've come in. Um, we had to kind of organise your days because you're working as a, an RNL lifeguard at the moment. Sure. So you're pretty busy, I imagine. Yeah, the beaches are pretty busy. Um, we're in our peak season now and I've, I sort of do that as a, as a full-time job and, uh, mainly because I'm, I'm raising money to keep pumping into my film because, you know, films cost a lot of money. Uh, we raised a lot on Kickstarter, 145% of our target when we, when we sort of listed that online last year, um, super popular but you know i just need a little bit more to get it over the line i mean given the fact that it has been a very difficult couple of years for everyone the fact that you went over what you needed to raise is a great sign that there is yeah interest in the project as you yeah. say but still for you you know you've got to to it, keep to battling it out really <laughs> haven't you yeah i think an interesting thing is that um I, I the the kickstarter had actually finished the money raising had finished before i got to the first person who actually asked me what the film was about <laughs> the the sort of format the technicality the idea um the language element of what we're doing was so interesting that i'd raised all the money without anybody going you know what's what's the film actually about you know um so yeah it's it's a it's a hell of a project um it started quite sort of like um modestly um and then it grew and grew and grew until I was sort of thinking about fundraising and decided that the film was going to be fully in the Cornish language. Um, and then we set about trying to make that a reality, which yes, was tricky, but we got there. I mean, there are, I think it's about 300 or more, you know, around that, Something three to like 400 that, yeah. people in Cornwall who are fluent in Cornish. How did you go around? So you, you've written the script for it as well. Yeah. So So how did you go about finding help then to get the translation done? So initially I wrote the whole script in English and I was sat on that with our format that we have, which is all black and white, 16 millimetre hand process negative, all quite interesting, but I just thought I needed something else to make it different that hadn't been done in this way before um i thought well you know it can because it's set in cornwall can it be in the cornish language it's in the 1700s as a story so that would work quite well decided that without really kind of thinking it through too much and then once we raised all the money i thought well i can try and you know translate it myself using the internet but i got about one line in and realized it was impossible (laughs) reached out to the council um and the language department at the council got back to me pretty much straight away and just said leave it with us you know we're going to translate the entire script for you um and they were going to do it for free so i had the language department sort of pour over it for a few weeks and then i got it back and it was fully in cornish and I couldn't believe it. Um, And they gave us a sort of audio recording to go with it as well. Wow, that's really helpful. Yes, super helpful. And they're really trying to push the sort of um, the uh, awareness of the language. Um, And we had months and months and months of uh, Zoom calls and sort of vocal training as well, Um, which I think also worked well with our format in that we filmed it as a silent film because it was using a very old camera that makes a lot of noise so you can't actually record audio on the day which gave us a lot of flexibility with um you know getting things wrong and 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 just really going for it but it does mean that in the next few months we're gonna have to 
sit down a bit like this and really do some ADR and dubbing. Now I'm getting a little bit of a sense here. It's uh, so filmed in an old camera, black yep. and white. Yeah. Uh, no sound, familiar. dubbed afterwards. <laughs> I'm getting getting a bit of a, a Mark Jenkin <laughs> feel yeah, about yeah. this. I wasn't going to escape that one. <laughs> winning film director. Um, have you been influenced by his work? Yeah, I'm thinking of Bait Definitely. to begin with, of it course. Wouldn't, I think the, the main thing for me was that when I saw Bait back in 2019, um, I was... I saw it in quite a, I, I think a QA and a actually where Mark was there talking about it and I was asking a few questions because I was so curious about, you know, why the film looked like it did. And I did a lot of research and a lot of um, sort of uh, Googling, I guess, and just general working out of how it was actually made. Once I kind of got a, a hint of it, um, I, com- I combined that with being part of a Sundance uh, trainee sort of collab program, it was called, where I was sort of learning to be a director and producer um, they had an assignment where they wanted me to make a film that was about 90 seconds long and they gave the same script to the whole class. Now, to make it stand out, I thought, well, why don't I try what Mark Jenkin did with Bait, see if it's possible. Um, and I actually realised that whilst I was doing it with a very random sort of help coming from a guy in Bristol but and this whole underground community that exists around film, that I was going to make something so different that people were going to be quite taken aback by it. And, and they were you know, the teachers and the people who were the advisors on that were really kind of astonished. I think this was pre-pandemic Zoom, but we were using Zoom. And when you get all those tiles at the top where you can see people's reactions, they played the film for everybody on the class when we finished and it was all done. And every single advisor just had like a complete extreme emotion on their face. It was either like shock, horror, hiding away, laughing, and it just caused such a visceral reaction. I was like, okay, I've got to take this a step further. My next project's going to it's going to be like this, you know. Um, and I actually discovered that being, you know, uh, regimental about it and doing it thoroughly and properly was a really good thing. And it was actually cheaper than digital. And it showed me that I can make things on film and have it for real, you know, real cinema. So he's been yeah, a real influence. Have you have you got to, to speak to him kind of one on one about what you? Uh, not been yet. Doing, I think no. he's making a you know he's making a new film called Ennis Main. Oh well, um, yeah. Well, that's premiered at Cannes, you see, yeah, didn't it? So exactly. yeah, he's so, he's and he's busy behind the scenes writing scripts for everything and everything. Kind isn't of stratospheric he? sort of response to what he's doing, and uh, I think that only goes to help the Cornish film community. And I don't want to tread on that at all. I want to embrace it and and help and get amongst it with that as well. Oh no, it's, it's wonderful, and I've seen. So I've, I've been on the on the website, which anyone can go to. Sure. It's uh, trendgelicrising dot com, and there are some very striking images of the yeah. film. So you filmed it last year, sure. as you were saying, and then you've you've got post production now to think mm-hmm. about as well. Um, is it quite exciting though to be at this stage? Yes, of it. A little bit daunting, and I think that the filming and the pre production were kind of the easiest parts. So. Where I am now, I am at the end of uh, developing it. I'm now editing it and I've got a first cut that's relatively close to where I want it to be. The hardest part by far was developing it myself uh, and trying to work out that process. Luckily, Kodak themselves helped us and helped me, um, gave me a lot of advice and various chemicals. But I spent the whole of October to February in my house uh, near Falmouth with the windows boarded up, complete pitch black. (laughs) Um, <laughs> developing three and a half thousand feet of film, which is over a kilometre, just absolute reels and reels and reels of it going through these chemicals, making all these mistakes, making all these, you know, learning as I went. I thought at one point, you know, potentially some of it might be wrecked, but actually when I got the scans back, it has only helped in terms of transporting the audience and the viewer back to the 1700s because it almost looks like found footage. It's very scratchy, very rough and raw, gritty, rough around the edges, you know. It looks like somebody found a film from several hundred years ago. Um, And whilst it's used bait as an inspiration in the early stages, now it's a lot more like a sort of silent film from the 1920s. Um, And combined with Cornish, it's something that people have never seen before. I'm sure. And the story then, it it follows, there's there's two main characters, I think, in it, isn't there? Um, And it's all about one person being sent somewhere to a remote military location. And then um, the the superior comes along and then it's just how that sense of isolation kind of can make you (laughs) behave in a a very strange (laughs) way. Where where did you get the idea then for for the script? So um, when I was sure on the format, I was kind of looking for inspiration and and knowing that I was going to make a story 
to sort of go with it that was going to match it. So if you think black and white, rough around the edges, quite scratchy, all those sort of things, it, it feels very atmospheric. And once I started thinking of that, I was thinking, well, you know, I'm in Cornwall. I go for walks very early in the morning trying to find inspiration. And when you're on the moors or you've got a storm or the wind or the, the sea sort of, you know, crashing below you you start to sort of build a narrative around that and you start to come up with themes of isolation and moods of being very stormy and 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 all that kind of thing so i just took it one step at a time and just constantly sort of expanded on that um and i knew that it was going to be a story about isolation and how interesting it is when two people get disconnected and cut off and how they start to sort of interpret reality in a different way and they start to sort of lose their minds a little bit um so yeah strictly the story follows um somebody called private garen pasco and he is sent to a remote outpost to um report on the movements of enemy ships and isolated with only uh, a, a fairly unhinged superior for company the two men soon descend into a maelstrom of chaos debauchery and fear um and the lines between right and wrong soon become blurred as does the reality of why they're really there and of course, all this conversation then and interaction is all in Cornish. How, all of it. how did your actors cope <laughs> with that? <laughs> um, a little bit, you know, of a struggle to start with, but that's why um, a, a guy called Mark Trevethan is extremely helpful uh, in the language department um, and a very nice guy. He helped us all the way through, nursed it all the way through. You know, people have an idea of kind of not pigeon Cornish, but, you know, hello, goodbye, thank you excellent you know things like that um but really getting down a lot of lines and a lot of stories is, is tricky and mm. it's spoken in a different way and sometimes can, things can be a little bit back to front um i actually have some of the script here you're um, not going to ask me to translate it are you? <laughs> i'm not going to ask you to translate it no but I, I thought that i might say things that you know may may help you kind of understand where i'm coming from okay um a little bit so um if I was going to say this line, which is Imaturmin no Chanja Jago, ni ilin nagul hema namoy. That means something about coming hema is here, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. So it means <laughs> it means times be changing, Jago. Can't be doing this no more. Um and if I said Angloyo Warren Treth, Lies de Stunie, Iarug Zavelis in Doro, that means you aren't so saintly. You'll be in on it too. You helped me. Very so. good. Your, your accent's very good as well. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it makes kind of similar uh, sort of sense to maybe Welsh. It's pretty close to that mm. in terms of a Breton language that's, um, you know, developed. Um, so I think that uh, people who are quite handy at Welsh maybe or, or, or these kind of, you know, more niche languages are going to understand it a fair amount. But um, because it was shot silently, what you're going to see is obviously the image. You're going to hear Cornish, but the subtitles are going to be in English. So there's going to be a lot going on. Um, but the whole film is spoken in Cornish. And I think people are going to be very busy watching the film. I'm sure. And, and how long at the moment do you, do you reckon it's going to be? So it's a fairly long format short film. Um, it's almost like a, a distilled feature film, really. It's probably pushing 35 minutes now as an edit. Um, uh, and I'm going to try and screen it around Cornwall as much as I can. So whilst a lot of film festivals say 20 minutes is your limit, this obviously goes way above that. But I'd rather make an evening out of it, take it around Cornwall, take it to communities that don't have access to, you know, as, ma as many sort of eye-opening films as the independent film industry can sort of produce. But also, you know, in cinemas, depending on how well it takes off, um, and then do maybe Q&As with it too, so that people can ask me about how it was made and and get people involved and really make an evening on it uh, of it um after that i'll probably take it to uh film festivals and things like that uh i'm, I'm aiming at the cornwall film festival i'd like to try and screen it there potentially um, but it's just getting the work done on it well yeah, yeah it's getting the work done but i think having a deadline's a good thing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise this will go on for a very long time <laughs> So um, if people want to find out more, they can go to the website, can't they? They can, yeah. So it's uh, www.trangelicrising.com. Um, it also has a Wikipedia page, an IMDb page. The Kickstarter that we raised all the money on also is is on there. And you can see all, see a lot of detail about it there, a lot of the sort of mood boards and the things that actually inspired the uh, story and the film itself. So you can really 
delve deep into it if you, if you want to, um, as well as its social media, which is uh, Trengelic Rising Film on Instagram and Twitter. And when is your deadline? When, what's the deadline you're setting yourself then? I know, of course, so, Film Festival is later this yeah, year. Yeah, I want to be doing sound sort of towards the start of next month. So that'll be a year from shooting, which is quite a long sort of period, but I want to make sure that it's absolutely right. I want to make it sure that people remember it for what it is i don't want to push something out that's not quite there or it could be better i want to make sure it's 100 percent um so we're going to be doing sound hopefully in august september i think the cornwall film festival is in november so that's kind of a good time for it to be fully polished and ready i'm sure we'll be you know tweaking it right up until that point and then over the winter when it's dark and stormy and atmospheric and cold just, just like our film, uh, I'll be able to show it to people and we'll have, you know, evenings in watching something that should be pretty entertaining. Well, I can't wait to see it. Will you come back when it's kind of ready to, to go out on the road then and talk to us Absolutely, about it? Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'll have quite a big sort of uh, advertising sort of PR sort of trail SAS campaign, you know. I would really want to get it out. So, uh, absolutely, I'd love to. Well, thank you so much for coming in. And uh, oh, yeah, it's funny how you, you you call in about Tom Cruise and you end up talking about your own <laughs> film as well. Yeah, um, he's, of, he's certainly loving England at the moment. If I can get him to see it, you know, that would be that would be good. <laughs> yeah, if you, well, I was going to say, yeah, if you get him to fly down here, that would that would be good. Yeah, uh, what a premiere! To one of your be. screenings, yeah. But uh, trengelicrising dot com for all the details. And best of luck with putting you know, the post production um, in between much. doing your your normal job as well. Really good to meet you this yeah. evening. And you, thank you. That uh, is. Guy Potter talking about his Cornish language film. And um, yeah, we'll find out more about it later this year when it's due to do the rounds in Cornwall. Uh-huh.